This is the Running Channel podcast with me, Andy Badley, my lovely co-host, Sarah Hartley, and crusty pants over there, <laughs> Rick Kelsey, who will go to any lengths to cheat in a Running Channel challenge. <laughs> Crusty pants. Crusty pants, yeah. Oh, need... I know what we're talking about. Because you put your crusts yeah. down your pants. I can't believe you that you've remembered that. I have remembered week. that. We discussed this after last week's podcast. Rick yeah. told and us. And I've been holding on to it for this week's introduction. If you've ever watched the Running Channel Pizza Mile, where did those crusts go? Down Rick Kelsey's shorts. Yeah, yes. there, there were reasons behind this. Imagine how long you... that video would have gone on if I hadn't put them down my pants. You told us you wore specific <laughs> underwear that day that would accommodate crusts from pizzas. Why, did, is it I, you why didn't... did I give so much away? <laughs> <laughs> is it because you didn't want your hair to go curly? You, I... That's what my mum always used to say yeah, if you eat listen, your crust. I've got my makeup on. Let's get on with it. Okay, today we're <laughs> going to be talking about what is the hardest running distance. We're each going to fight our corner, so we should probably get stuck in. Let's crack in. Right. Oh, yes, Sarah. Let's <gasps> let's crack in, shall we? <laughs> let's crack into let's this crack in. Let's crack into it. I hate you both <laughs> so much. <laughs> Although, you know what that reminds me? I really want to crack into an Easter egg right now. Yeah, Is well, how I would use that phrase. So what's the latest... Um, uh, and the earliest that Easter can come? Uh, when they put the eggs on the shelves in the supermarket <laughs> and however much restraint I have of eating my last I'm Easter assuming egg. Rick was asking the, the real question as to what's the what the earliest weekends and latest weekends it can oh, fall I in don't the year. Care. Come on, you got a first, they'll, you should know this. There'll still oh. be an Easter egg in oh. February and I'm all here for it. I think it's the 25th of March is the earliest. Oh, great, no one asked. And I think the latest is the <laughs> yeah. 30th of April. Thank Did one of the six so prime ministers much. tell you that? <laughs> I can't remember which one. Yeah, it's hard to keep up, isn't it? <laughs> so, you're so big time. Anyway. Oh, how's, how's your week of running oh, been? Right. So what's, first. What is the biggest thing you've ever lost at a race? <laughs> Pride, dignity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all of those, Ooh, all of those things. Like I've an lost item. a shoe. An item. And I, you lost a shoe? Yeah. Right. What did, what did you lose? I lost my car at the <laughs> weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say you lost a child. Oh, but, okay. no. So we recently, as is you know, it, got a new car. Yes. Right. Um, and you know, big race, lots of people, lots of parking areas, lots of different fields, lots of places you can park. You can't remember. I no longer have an app that I can find it because my phone's dead. Mm. You know where the car is. So Steward finds me in the wet, just looking a bit aimless. Were you just, were you just, press, were you just pressing your key, hopefully, hoping that you'd hope, hear it? Hoping I could hear it. Oh <laughs> and the guy, the guy's, Did you do the thing where you press the key to your forehead and then, you're, and then you become an antenna and yeah, it, it reaches gives you more a bit range, further? Yeah. yeah. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's no, even more, I think it's even more if you put it like slightly in your mouth. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, I couldn't hear it and it wasn't doing anything. <laughs> so the guy comes up to me and he goes, uh, hi, mate. Um, can I help you, you know, find your <laughs> Are car? Are you okay? Yeah. And you I probably was like, thought you were trying to steal a car. Yeah. So He's like, are you the guy that would put pizza crust down his Yeah, down his exactly. yeah you're that guy. <laughs> I don't trust you. On his yeah, face. Yeah. I don't trust you in this so, car park. So... I don't know what I even told you. Um, so, so he said to me, well, um, what car is it? And I went, I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> you sure I couldn't you remember, could I couldn't remember what car it, it we have. Did you have it on the key? No, Do no. you remember what color it was? I, I, I remembered what color it was. Yeah. I said, yeah, no, it's gray. Oh, like, that would have narrowed what, it down. What, what type of car is it? And then, yeah, he's like, well, show me your key. And I was like, oh, right, okay, yeah. <sighs> So I knew the brand yeah. of the car, fair, it is but actually, not the type of car it was. It's I, very I, hard I, to remember I couldn't that. remember what it was. Yeah. Right? And I was like, so it's got two seat kids seats in the back. It's got a Sainsbury's <laughs> bag in it and it's gray and it's big. It's big. He's like, and he's like, like before so after the guy event. went to me, so you don't know what you drive. <laughs> and I was like, I mean, to I be just fair, I, when you're in it. Know? That is quite a Rick Kelsey thing, though, isn't it? No, that was so me. He's, so he's someone... just used to being driven around. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I often finish very late or start very early. That's yeah. why I get driven around a little bit. Yeah, that's in fine. the other jobs. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, cheat? Anyway. Do you, do you, do you cheat at those jobs as well? Jobs. Yeah. Can we not? Go, we're going off topic here. <laughs> okay, fine. So, did you eventually find it? Yeah, it took me two hours and kind of ruined Mother's Day. But anyway, yeah, oh. found the car. Yeah, she was. We were happy in the end. Anyway, found the car. Turns out I know what I drive now. Excellent. Well yeah. done, mate. Love that. Noted it you. in the phone. Oh, yeah. great. I had also had a very fun weekend. Yeah. So this is coming in a video, so I won't spoil too much of it, but I filmed my entire week of training and my long run, I know I said I was going to go to the trails. Couldn't be bothered. It was the worst week Couldn't ever. Couldn't be bothered. It was, it was pretty horrible weather on. So it was a Saturday or Sunday? Uh, Saturday because I knew it was raining on Sunday. Okay. So it was nice. It was nice weather, but it had just been the worst week. Like 
you prepare to watch Sarah have a bad week. <laughs> if you're going to watch that video, it's terrible. Started a, started as a bad week, didn't it? Because the first thing you have to do is this every week. With yeah, me and Rick. it was awful. Just set you up for a fall. Yeah, it was so bad. There were some good moments. But anyway, so I decided I was like, and it was 32K at a comfortable pace, which is the worst thing you can give me. Because like, you've got no focus so in it to break boring. it up. 32K. Yeah. yeah, it's so long. It's so boring. So I was like, right, okay, I'm going to chunk it. Podcast favorite. Yeah, nice. So I would decide I was going to run two park run, then do park run and then run home. Yeah. Nice, breaking it up. Got to Park Run oh, yeah. and they had to delay it for 15 minutes because their defib wasn't working, defibrillator. Oh, yeah. So it was incredible. And you can actually watch this unfold in the video, but you just saw how people's minds work. Cause like no one was angry. Like it's a free 5K, like yeah. no one's that annoyed. But half the people just stayed stood still. Yeah. Half the people sprinted off and were like, right, I'm just going to do it Isn't anyway. Done? Yeah, Isn't, oh, they just, yeah, yeah. So they they just went off and did it anyway. And then I was in the group that was like, well, I need to get a long run done. I'll get a f couple of extra because they were like, it's going to be about 15 minutes. So yeah. if you want to go, you can come back. So I just like went off, got a couple of extra kilometers in and then did park run. Oh, nice. Lovely. You didn't have to add them on at the end. No. So, so it, was actually, yeah. it was quite good. Does it's that quite... say a lot about patience of the British public? Yeah, well, I'm surprised we just didn't all form a queue. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> Everyone loves a queue. I'm surprised we went straight in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was good. Well, but... also I spotted that your nemesis We've talked about it last week or the week before on the podcast where yeah, Tito, Tito, our videographer, mm -hmm. had uh, cheekily started one second behind you on the starting mat of a 10K uh, yes. to make sure that when you cross the line together at the end, you you would have ended up one second faster. Yeah. Um, he also did a long run this weekend at Marathon Pace. Uh -huh. And it's, a, and it's the, the big showdown, isn't it, in a few weeks? He's actually doing Manchester Marathon, then you're doing yeah, so London Marathon. Yeah, it's literally Marathon. a week apart. His, his, I... And he's on, in good shape. Clicked on Strava, saw yeah. that come up and just went, oh, yeah. I'm so happy for you, but so annoyed because yes. it was so oh, good. I it was saw like you commented Marathon saying, well done, Tito. Was that through gritted teeth? Yeah, it was. <laughs> I was yeah. like, I need to put on a good show here. I need to, yeah. I need to appear the bigger person. Actually, Sarah, a lot of the people kind of like the back office staff, the people who actually run this show, yeah, uh, <laughs> have actually recently got rather yeah. good at running. I know, really yeah. annoying. Yeah, whereas before it was just that, you know, I couldn't really get very far. Uh, it's only, you it's did only, most of it. it it's, only, it's only you that's not really the back office staff. So yeah, me, me and Sarah actually put in a, put in a shift all oh, week. Really? You just show up as talent. You, know, I, you just come in, you say, um, I've got a taxi here. I've got a taxi here because I couldn't find my car. I, uh, I'm, the, I'm the talent. What's on my rider today? <laughs> I will drink only this brand of just water. That is yeah. genuinely my favourite question of like when we meet people and they sometimes are like, so what do you do? Yeah. And when me and you actually say that we do stuff that isn't just like messing just, about. Yeah. We're like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're real <laughs> You can actually yes. have a job. Proper and then pros. when we're like, no, Rick does just piss about. They're like, yeah. oh, fine. Okay, <laughs> don't worry. Well, he does have, he has, he I has bring my jobs. makeup with me. Yes, he has. Yeah, because yeah, you have time to do it. Some of us were doing emails before this. Uh, that's true. I, I was actually doing emails. With, I was booking, I've got some terrific guests for, oh. for the Running Channel Meets. Yes, which is coming very soon. Yeah. So you just uh, look out because it will be in your regular Running Channel podcast feed with a different artwork. So you'll be able to identify it, you'll be able to see it. Um, and we're going to try and produce those as regularly as we can. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Mm. Um, I've also been doing a little bit of running, but not 32 kilometers. Oh, yeah. No. How far? Much less. I actually ran 50 odd K last week, um, which was a, my no. highest mileage of 2024. Yeah. But real focus on quality at the moment because I'm doing this time trial event where um, I'm trying to run as fast as I can over a much shorter distance. So it's that one mile well that that you funny story um <laughs> I, to this point i have thought it's a while and I, literally 30 minutes before this podcast uh, i i was told that it might not be a mile it's 1k um so Which we're just as fast as you can for a thousand meters yes it's um, not even your distance no no quite <laughs> yeah uh, but you would have had to do a 1k time trial in training though right yeah it always been that the real benchmark indicator of what i what shape i was in for the mile would be a 1k time trial so right. that's the last Big, big training session I'd have done a couple of weeks before okay. the Olympics or whatever. Mm -hmm. whatever. How fast can you run a kilometre? Well, we're gonna, I, I can't tell you because there's a competition running at the moment. By the time this podcast goes out on Saturday morning, so a lot of people listening to this, yeah. I already have done this time trial. Okay. Um, Sarah, give us your ballpark. <sighs> ballpark. Well, I was guessing your mile time, <laughs> like a lot of other people. Yes, I know. We might have messed this up a little bit. Um, if you are listening to this, I'm so sorry because um, it, it was something slightly out of our control and... We, um, we may have messed up here, and particularly my training, because psychologically I've been focused entirely on how to run this mile. And then at the last it's minute, right. we're, we're pivoting. You'll You'll stuff be out, of control on the, yeah. out of our control on the running channel. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah, all the time. I think, so based off of the fact that you've run a 
was it 245 in that um mm, yeah roughly that shoe thing i think based off of that and the fact that you're so competitive yeah mm. i feel like you're gonna go pretty hard on this oh yeah so and run 210 210 <laughs> <laughs> 210 will be the world record for the, for the kilometer oh is that a world record yeah no surely someone's done it under two minutes no well, that would be yeah, a Yeah, they have. So Sarah reckons you're going to run a world yes, record at the no, kilometer. I, I <laughs> promise you. I, okay, I promise. Right, so there'll be a pause in the edit here while Sarah Googles what the 1K time is. Okay. If, I'm 100% confident well, Sarah, here. So Sarah said two seconds. Well, I was going to go four minutes, 10. So Okay, well, I'm confident, hopefully. And it depends on how fast I go in the first minute or so yeah. as to whether I end up walking because I've just totally overcooked it because that could realistically happen. Sarah, I can promise you that it's not under two minutes. Ha! You are wrong. I'm absolutely not. American speed skate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, keep reading. Keep reading, Sarah. Keep reading. You're so Amer smart. American speed skater. <laughs> Break the world's men's one thousand. You were so happy to prove me wrong. <laughs> I was thinking, bloody hell, that's fast. <laughs> <laughs> it was one minute five. Are seconds. you allowed to speed skate, Andy? No, I'm not. Although no. I did that we've talked about this that I look like a hovercraft, so I look like I was race walking. <laughs> but I've never been accused of speed skating. Okay, All right, so, so the not fastest is actually two eleven. Okay, so like 2.30. All right, so it would be breaking a record if Andy does 2.10. I swear kilometer. though I've seen like, well, if you wanted to sign up, it was from like 1.50 to, anyway. All right, well, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks. Good luck. Sure I've been doing, doing lots something. of fast stuff and my legs hurt. Yeah. Is summer. I think that could be described as the hardest running distance if you did it. Look at that segue. Yeah. That's what we're talking about today. Yeah, so I wanted to put this debate because I know that we all enjoy different distances and I there is there let's just caveat this. There is no right answer to this. But for the next however long Rick lets us go for, mm. we're going to argue what is the hardest running distance because I personally would argue an ultra marathon. It depends on who so I think it depends on who you are. So I, I been fascinating for me in the last year or so talking to what I'd consider to be really hardcore athletes, super fast um, marathon runners, also um, a few of the best ultra runners in the world. Mm -hmm. And they were saying that they would rather be out on the trails in the mountains with the hundreds of meters of elevation and be out there for 36 hours or whatever running yeah. crazy distances than run 5k. They were saying that they, they think that 5k is so hard that they'd rather do these bonkers ultra marathons. But why? Because 5k is all out. Yeah, yeah, but it's a totally different think, kind of uh, pain. Do you think though, if you asked, do you think it's the opposite of what you enjoy doing? So like yeah. for you, for example, if I said right now, for the rest of your life, you have to either race 5K and below, and that's all you're training for, that's all you're racing, or you can only train for a hundred mile plus distances in the mountains, what yeah. would you say would be harder? Oh, the, the hundred miles plus in the mountains. But that's yeah. the thing, but then yeah. if you asked, person who trains for 100 miles in the mountains yeah. you can only train for one or the other they would yeah. probably say 5k yeah and i think it's it's the, oh, there's definitely a split in the running channel office i would say i'm probably out there listening to the podcast of what people's psychology lends itself to mm -hmm. so my psychology doesn't lend itself to things without a clear physical marker of a finish line for example so it's yeah. really different for me to run a three minute rep in training or a five minute effort in training where I've just got to run until my watch beeps versus doing what is essentially the equivalent thing on the, the track or on the road where I know I'm running and it will take me about five minutes, but I know I'm running from point A to point B and that's the finish line. Yeah. I'm way better when I have a finish line. Um, yeah, so it's like there's, um, but then you can put that on the other end of the spectrum as well. Like there are 24 hour races. Yeah. I would be, so, I'm the same. I'd be so bad at that. Yeah. I would get like 10 hours in and just be like, well, I'm just going to sit down for five hours now and just like <laughs> eke it out. Yeah. Whereas there are some people who much prefer that compared to if you were going to say you're running like 100 kilometers yeah. or 100 miles in 24 hours, they would prefer to have the 24 hour time limit as their thing that they're working towards yeah. compared to the distance. So, and I've sort of, I've, I've sidelined myself a little bit. The point I was actually thinking of was more that the psychology would be those that can endure for a long time, but they're not at their max but they can just keep going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they, they and that's not me. Whereas uh, and then there's other people like that I'd say I fall into this category where I'm re I'm willing to go properly 100% like to the red line and just beyond to the point where if I exercise for 10 or 15 minutes or whatever it might be then I'm absolutely done like, and I'm probably going to be sick from the lactate that's accumulated and all that sort of stuff which but, is a different mentality but then see where does that put me because I'm not prepared to do either <laughs> 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 of like I will not hit my red line not doing it 
Mm-mm. Yeah. Well, you normally I, do it in the first minute of whatever distance yeah, you're I'm trying to do. Yeah, I'm not enjoying it. But equally, I don't really want to be out for that long either. So that's why at the moment I quite enjoy the challenge of the marathon, which is quite hard mm. because yeah. I'm willing to, you know, go go quite close to the line, but not yeah. quite there. And for a relatively long period of time compared to a 5K. Yeah. And I do find it quite hard. Rick? I think it's based on your personality, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> what would you say is the hardest for you? Well, whatever the next distance is up from what I'm currently training from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Or to be fair, down. So like what are you yeah. currently training for at the moment? So 10K. 10Ks. Yeah. So would you, if I asked you to race an all out 5K or an all out half marathon right now, how would you feel? Uh, all out half marathon would be harder. Really? I'd, I'd say so, yeah. Because yeah. I'm kind of going all out 5K most weeks now. To the point that I do feel physically sick when I get to the end, but still kind of get that run yeah. as high about 30 seconds later. Mm. But I'm I'm not, during the 5K at the moment, I'm probably not enjoying it because I'm literally, I'm, you know, I, I'm I'm pushing as absolutely as hard as I can. Yeah. So I do- I just don't enjoy that. I don't think I- well, Aren't you doing, don't you do that? Well, so I don't think I told you guys this, but- because there was too much to catch up on. But like a few weeks ago, I went and did a track workout and it was the it was the pyramid one. Yeah. And so you're getting faster and faster and faster towards the end. And I think I just got like too excited. And I went and did a, I went and did a 400 meter, basically PB, mm. oh, wow. at, like at PB pace and um, got to the end of it. And I was like, oh, I feel sick. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, don't enjoy this. That was that was too hard. Because you, you, you went bit. all out. Yeah. 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 Whereas I, I did eight, K last week, just in the middle of the week. And it was at a decent pace. It was about kind of 5.15 a kilometer, 5.20 a kilometer. Nice. And I finished it and I thought, wow, I feel really fit. I really enjoy that. As in that it was a nice, you know, the, it was crisp mm. morning. It was a nice day to get out. But then going all out on the Saturday, just like, whoa, absolutely knackered. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it had its toll. It took its toll on you a few days later. Yeah. 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 I, I think there's a different kind of hardness we could talk about or difficulty, which is, I mean, I, 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 when we, when we did this episode on, or an episode on what's the best race distance, I think I was yeah. advocating for the shorter distances, obviously. Um, but I'm thinking about the mentality that I had to have for the 1500 meters or the one mile or even the 5k, but specifically talking about the 1500 meters, you're running for three and a bit minutes mm-hmm. all out. And there were two aspects to it. One was I knew before I hit the start, I was standing on the start line, how much that was going to hurt. So like after one, yeah. about, after about two minutes, it's really hard. Like you're, you're going at your absolute max and there's people around you who you're trying to read the situation and work out whether they can keep going or not and which of you is more tired. So there's yeah. the, the mental game of it. So yeah, there's, there's the, the difficulty of knowing that pain. Whereas in the marathon for me that I felt great and it actually felt quite comfortable until 20, 25 K. Yeah. So it's, it's a much more delayed onset of the pain. Yeah. Well, how long would you say, so after you'd like raced hard at the Olympics, for example, mm. How long after that race was it before you felt like human again? Well, I'd often have, so the Olympics and the world champs and you'd have three rounds. So you'd have to come and race again about 36 hours later, probably usually that, that kind of time. So you'd have a day off in between. Cause that's the other thing that's hard as well is that when, once you get into the category of like the longer distances, mm. there's a whole other element of hard because you're going so hard and putting your body through so much that you have to take a whole week off or like you don't you don't have that rounds element to it from like a competition yeah and i appreciate my experience is is different to most people don't aren't running rounds at championships and they're not running for three or four minutes um no but i would say like if for people who if you're going and racing a 5k yeah chances are you might want to run again a few days later yeah Yeah. whereas with a marathon most people are like i am good see you in a bit yeah, uh, the, the shoes are definitely helping with recovery, aren't they? I think people are recovering more quickly from mm. tough efforts and things like that. That's interesting. I would say though as yeah. well that that's probably relative to like whether it's the first time that you've done it. Yes. Because I remember like, so I ran 32K on Saturday and on Sunday I was like, whoa, my legs feel all right. Yeah, this well, is they amazing. feel all right. Yeah, they actually feel yeah. okay. And I think just because I'm in a stage now where they can... They're kind of like they're used to. They're used it's to not it. the first. But you didn't time go out on Sunday. It. You didn't go out on Sunday. No, like, I know. No. I haven't. I, this is Monday, and I still. Well, haven't so you reckon, Andy, that the shoes are actually aiding people's recovery to such an extent that people can run more often because of them. Definitely. If I think about the shoes that even that I was running in, they were it's just focused on on cutting weight, and so there was hardly any midsole foam. The spikes yeah. and stuff I was racing in were just basically bits of cardboard almost. So you you have 
you, you don't have <laughs> the stack height now and the foam and the cushioning and the, and the, the reduction in the impact oh, that yeah. you experience is, is quite a big factor. Do you know what? I last week ran three times in a week and I did something that I made a video about saying I should never do, which is run two days on a row because I knew yeah. it didn't work for my body. And then on Saturday, for the first time since my set of operations, I've, I've been in pain in my knee. Oh, no. My, yeah, yeah, my, 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 that knee. And I think it's just, it's accumulatively yeah. doing the days. Yeah. Oh, How's it feeling now? Still sore. Yeah. Okay. So this, it's, I, I still think it's just a minor setback. I don't think it's anything actually that serious. It's inflamed. It's, it's mm. it found that uncomfortable, not having that day's rest. Yeah. Um, but but even I do think like, that's a good lesson in, in if, you, if you know what works for your body. Having that day off. Yeah, being yeah. tempted to just squeeze something in or, or yeah. take a risk um, when you're in your position in particular where you have had those serious problems is like it's rarely a good idea. Even if you haven't had like serious injury problems, I I pretty much, I run four times a week. And so between most runs, I have a day off. And then last week I did like two easy runs back to back and then had to do a tempo run. And mm. even I was like... Whew, it's a lot. Three days in a row yeah. <laughs> was a bit much. I, I had another aspect of, of difficulty in terms of distances as to whether we, we could think about it like this. Again, going back to the shorter distances, I knew that if I made a mistake, so if, if, if in, in terms of racing, you're watching the people around you to see if someone makes a break for it. Mm -hmm. If you miss that in the 1500 meters, you're not paying attention, you're in the wrong spot, you're boxed in, surrounded by other people where you can't get out, then it's game over. Mm. Or if you just have a bad 200 meters, like literally for 30 seconds, you switch off somehow, not focused, you lose a couple of seconds and then the Olympic qualifying time that you're chasing, you can't get it back. You can't refine those two seconds. Yeah. Whereas in a marathon, you can afford to drift off a little bit mentally. You can, yeah. you have a little bit more leeway. And, yeah. and I, so I felt less pressure on that kind of thing because you know that you can make up two or three seconds. You like, can but make then up, yeah. I would caveat that with, if you go out and race a 5k and yeah. it doesn't go how you want it to go, you've still got that eight, like eight, 10 weeks of training in your legs, obviously not at world champs level, cause yeah. they're not going to rearrange that. But like <laughs> yeah. for that, for the average person, you can go do that race. And then if it doesn't go to plan, you can go, right. Okay. Give myself two to four weeks yeah. race again for a marathon. This is the thing that's scaring me so much right now is that I have literally dedicated so far 11 weeks of my life to this. Yeah. And if it's raining, if something goes wrong, if like the fueling doesn't go yeah. right, there are like so many little things and that it like, that is it. That's the day. If I want to race but if another it's marathon. Raining, you've trained in the rain. Yeah, I know, but it just makes it so much harder and I really don't want it to rain or be too hot. I need, I need perfect weather conditions. So if we can just all yeah. start you know, hoping mm, for the British like weather to be on our side. raining or really hot. Brilliant. Thanks, Rick. You, <laughs> you, you, are, you are right though, I think. And that's the closest thing that, the, that we've probably experienced in our running careers, that what you're saying there is what I felt. Hey, I am a very fast elite athlete. Oh, hey, I wasn't, nothing about, nothing about pace. It's, it's about that, that feeling of, it, can't like, hinges, it. it hinges on this day. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we've put you in that position before with trying to run that, that 10K in under 45 yeah, minutes a few terrifying. years ago. Um, but it is, it's different pressure, right? Where you, you yeah. know that, yes, you, you'll get another chance down the line at some point, but it's this one day that you've built up for and we're putting it as a video on the running channel or whatever it might be. And then you, yeah. you feel a lot more kind of. Yeah, that's true actually. It. And especially like, I do think I'm going to watch, I, I don't know much of what it's like to be an elite athlete, but if you think of like the pressure for the sports in the Olympics, where there's hardly any coverage in the four years in between, yeah. like that is a lot of pressure for like if you have an off day, which everyone does. Yeah. Like you can't, exactly. you can't be on your best every single race day for N loads of different reasons. No, absolutely not. So I think in summary, the hardest race distance is the one that you put the most pressure on yourself to go out and achieve. And mm. maybe yeah. the one that goes against your natural psychology of what you'd yeah. like to try and take Or on. even you're doing it for the first time. Yeah. I think makes it harder. But what do you think? Email in podcast at therunningchallenge.com. What is the hardest race distance? Do you have some more fuel to add to the fire that we can debate next time? Let us know. But now it's almost time for your questions. But first, we've got some news to discuss. News time. So sports bras and funnies. Andy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought it was funny. Um, my lovely wife was setting up um, a... So it's not... It's, it's, it's personal news, family news. Um, was setting up a workout um, on her watch. Yeah. And she was programming in. And then she came back and she looked rather cross. Because instead of programming in 200 meter recoveries, um, she'd programmed in 20 meter recoveries. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think my raucous laughter was Oof. the sympathy she was looking 20 for. 20 meters. <laughs> so what does she Three. do? Go did again. she just give herself 20 meters? Or did I, she pause her watch? I think she must have paused oh, her God. watch eventually, but I don't think she knew what was going on to start with. She was like, what's happening? That's like the worst thing ever though, because you yeah. either have to recover for longer, but it's not recorded. So yeah. then you're, you've lost miles. Mm. Yeah. Oh, 
Yeah. I'm so sorry. That sounds so awful. <laughs> right, there we go. This is the sympathy she was but looking also, for. Also, we've all been there. Yeah. Um, I, I think I think though the funniest one I've ever done is when it's too long. So I've like programmed it in two miles. Yeah, I've programmed yeah. in like a good like two k recovery oh, nice. between yeah. like four hundred meters. That reps. sounds great. Lunch. <laughs> yeah, picnic blanket. Yeah. 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 Top tip on that actually to make it a little bit more controllable for me as I've been doing these faster things. I've been programming in my recoveries as like lap button lap button press, mm. so I can see how long I've had mm. and then go off. So oh. you know, because I'm I'm often on areas where I need to cross a road before I then do the next bit. Uh, you have to show you can, how to do that. There's also, if anyone's using the runner app, you can set, you can set, so like the workouts automatically go into your watch, yeah. but you can set it so it is open recoveries. Yes. However, every single time I go to the track, I forget to make it open. Every single time I do a tempo run in the park, it's it's open. Yeah. And so I have to think about it. But oh, I have to find- what? Well, so you just you just recover until you press the lap button on your watch, yeah. and then that sets you but onto you the can, next interval. You can oh, also do it so that your intervals are lap button presses. So if you are on the track, it's not off your watch's GPS. Oh. It's off like lap button press. But anyway, do you, want to, bras. do you want to know something interesting about sports bras? Yes, please. Yeah. So, um, can um, you um, can you get special ones with uh, pizza crust pockets? <laughs> 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 oh my god no but you can get so some of the, the some of the sports bra inventions are incredible you can get like key pockets you can get a phone pocket in the front i think i've seen recently i've got one with a phone pocket in the back so you could have you know oh I mean, like a baguette all running out. gear just needs to be designed well, I, no no in let's, a let's better re- way yeah let's revisit that for a minute I of all of the things that, that you, of all of the things like that you whip out, a sword or an arrow. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. That you'd, you'd pull out a sword, like, like, yeah. But, but a baguette was what you thought. Yeah, a well, it's a running Keep joke of like all the things that you can put in a hydration pack. So, like, for oh, example, Tom right. from the Running Channel once did a whole. I don't know if it was a hike or a run, but he had a uh, I remember sausage this. roll. How, how do <laughs> down I remember the this? Front of his yeah. back. He was buzzing when he got it out. Anyway, um, sports bras. Yeah. So I'm going to do a brief overview, but I, if you're interested, definitely go and read the full post. So it's from someone called Shalaya Kip in the, from the US. They basically realized that there was very little research into sports bras, yeah. which there should be more. And they were saying, is it actually going to affect performance due to how tight your waistband is? Um, oh, also because, the, like the underwire area or whatever the, the, the yeah. test right, so like some sports bras are literally just like pull on it's not adjustable yeah. at all yeah. other ones will work like a normal bra where you've got different levels of adjustment yeah i had always thought so i was actually talking to some of the other people who wear sports bras in the office and we all said this morning like oh yeah well, we've all got that one where like it's a bit tight but, yeah. you, but go, you keep it it's better to be too tight than too yeah. loose surely yeah. yeah no so they did research basically they stuck um they stuck like a balloon catheter into the waistband of the bra. And then and to they- To measure the pressure that it's putting on your chest. Yeah. And then they measured, it was all to do with like VO2 max and yeah. how that would affect you over a marathon. And basically the results, I don't want to say this wrong, for an individual running a three hour marathon, a 2% improvement in VO2 max would equate to a three minute improvement. Wow. In VO2, sorry. So you could see real performance benefits if you loosened your sports bra. And oh, that would say- so Did they see that some sports bras- being too tight would yeah, reduce so your VO2 on, by 2%. On average, we saw a 1.3% increase in VO2 from the loose to tight condition. Oh, wow. Oh, so if you if you'd loosened it enough to give you your <laughs> yeah. literally room for your ribs and, and, and lungs to, to expand. expand. Yeah. yeah. So wow. it's really interesting. Okay. You can, I'm sure, have a look, like if you wear a sports bra, have a look at where you can get it fitted. Because yeah. I've always thought the key thing is... The other thing, your boobs move in a figure of eight when you run. So it's not just like up and down. So there's loads of interesting stuff on it. And basically, please do more research because there is not enough out there. But check the tightness of your sports bra. Don't make it too loose, but just have a little think. Are you wearing one that's too tight? Can you make it a bit looser? Might help your marathon time. I've had the same thoughts for chest straps for heart rate. Um, Oh, yeah, that's a good point. I have to wear it quite tight. um, Otherwise, it slips down. Mm. Um, but then if I wear it too tight, I experience what, what you've described there, which yeah. is you're just like, oh, is that is that restricting my breathing a little bit? It's like that mm. one, one or two yeah. percent. So Well, it's interesting with stuff like that, because obviously there are like different heart rate monitors that we're seeing now of like yeah. people are just using wrist or arm or like yeah. other stuff. Yeah. Go on, what are the questions? Okay, starting off with Rob from Southampton. Hello, Rob. Hi, Rob. What are your thoughts regarding overtaking another runner at the finish line? Oh, hello. Is there a point where it's poor etiquette? I did a run where I dodged in front of the person as I was entering the funnel. (laughs) I almost knocked over the person in front. Oops, I'm possibly a little competitive. 
This has happened to me a few times recently. Oh, in you've done funnels. it. You've done it or people have done it to no, you? No, people have done it to me. And I really? thought, I thought, well, you're kind of in the th funnel because they take the, the timestamp when you enter. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you kind of get, I think when you're there, you need to stop. Yeah. yeah. You can't I think it's, it's hard when it's a funnel and you can only fit one, like when they are literally like doing it manually per mm. person, it's hard because there's not enough room. Whereas if you have like a whole finish line, it doesn't really, doesn't make, really make, matter no, as doesn't matter. much it's because it's you've the got funnel. space. The issue is the funnel. Yeah. But then they need the funnel. Yeah, I think I think a lot of it's momentum based. If you if you have like really got your speed going that last hundred meters of an event and you are just trying to get to the line, then sometimes, yeah. you know, you're always taught as a young athlete to run through the line, not to stop by on or before the line. I mean, this is more relevant if you're talking about hundreds of a mm. second in a, in a shorter distance. Yeah. But like, yeah, if, if you've got that and then you just kind of keep going and end up someone else has stopped and you pass them then, then that's that's probably a bit different than if you're, you know, dipping to get past that person and then you know, pushing people out of the way and shouldering them and being quite physical. But if it's just your own momentum and you're not sort of um, endangering anyone else, then it's probably okay, I think. But yeah, yeah you, you, got, you can't you can't like shoulder your way into a narrow finish funnel. If there's room for no. one person to cross yeah. that line there, then and you haven't managed to get in front of that person. And what are your 50 thoughts? Oh, okay. Now. And what are your thoughts on rugby tackles by the funnel? <laughs> <laughs> if it's a close mate, go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it was you, I'd be all over that. Although that's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rugby, okay. rugby, rugby tackles on Rick Kelsey, any of us here be fine. <laughs> they are, yeah, 100% okay. Just nudging ahead at the, in, you know, the finish line. I think line. We've, no. all, yeah. we've all done it okay. though in like a racing situation where like if you're going for a personal best and you're in that last like sprint finish and there's someone just in front of you, it's excellent momentum to try and like unlock yeah. that extra little bit of speed, but don't just don't endanger anyone else. Next question from Ben from Melbourne. Is this Ben, Ben from Melbourne? Podcast Ben. Podcast, Podcast Ben. ben. Well, he Podcast got, he got Ben in. tagged me on uh, Strava this week saying thanks for Oh, I mention. saw that. Nice. You're welcome, yeah. Ben. Yeah. Um, with two kids and a more difficult life than Rick. It's not hard. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you managed to do your morning routine without putting caviar anywhere near your face? Um, what? Rick, how do Rick I has make... the help come in. Oh my God. <laughs> can I put, can we... Car ready, waiting for him. Yeah, yeah. With he a goes big outside. sign that says <laughs> Rick on it so yeah, he doesn't miss it. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. He I like the... it when they do the eye with it as a circle. Oh, oh a heart. Yeah, a yeah. love heart. Or a heart. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Um, okay. How do I make taking my dog for a run on a leash count in my training program? He runs quickly, then drags behind, then stops for a poo, and after 30 <laughs> minutes, he walks. <laughs> I have to walk him twice a day because it was my decision to get him. <laughs> and I can't tell him to do anything different because he's 40 kilograms. <laughs> Help. Love me and Jerry. Joey. Oh, hey, Joey. Um, so my dog is similar, very, very similar. And that actually I saw someone at uh, this weekend when I was running yeah. <laughs> and their dog had stopped for a poo and they were absolutely fuming. Furious. Stop your watch. <laughs> they were just there with a poo bag waiting for their dog to, <laughs> to finish. <laughs> like, Ugh. I would just say you've got to make it count as an easy run and you've yeah. got to, I don't know. I don't know what the rules are in Australia for like letting... I think you still How do I make taking my dog poo. for a run on leash? <laughs> no, 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 sorry, not that. I was going to say like on leash versus off leash. I think you still get fined. <laughs> no, definitely pick it up. Yeah, yeah. Like um, it. But yeah, I don't know if you can, if you could do it as an off lead run, then that would be the dream because then your dog can just run at its own mm. pace and catch up with you. That's how I've had the most success with my dog if I'm doing like an easy 4K. I, ben, Ben's I, dog looks like a werewolf. I mean, literally has that much hair. It is Oh, it's like the big, huge. big shaggy yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dulux dog. Yeah. yeah. Other paint brands are available. Um, he, he, I think he should do, I think you should take a, a leaf out of the Rick Kelsey school. Oh of, yeah. Uh, I think you should just hire someone to deal with this for you. <laughs> 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 I tell you take what. your PA with you yeah, on the exactly, run so exactly. they pick it up for you yeah, and, and, then, and then they've got to catch you up with the dog yeah and then if, and then if the dog <gasps> stops and it's 40 kilograms then you just carry on with your run and then uh, hand it to the PA I, in fact you then, get your in-laws to do all of this don't you wait wait I've got, <laughs> you fly them over from I'm, Canada <laughs> treat, them to a, treat them to a meal out at Tim Hortons which you tell them only exists in one town in the whole of the UK Harlow in Essex and, and, then, <laughs> and then you say can you look after the kids so I'm going out yeah, yeah. Or as another option. <laughs> you know me so well. Yeah. Could he get a little running buggy for Joey? Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. And then when and they Joey... Be 40 a kilograms, one, that's a big It wouldn't kid. be a little one. It would be All right, get a, like, you, one of those 1980s prams. Could you get a forklift prams. truck? Yeah, shopping, yeah. Yeah, shopping trolley for yeah. Joey. 
Oh my gosh, you can make the news. Man runs okay, 5K lots, with shopping Lots of thoughts trolling. there. Lots of <laughs> thoughts. Good luck, Ben. Let yeah. us know how you get on. I think yeah. that was really useful advice from us. Well, that was fun. Sarah, do you have a favour to ask? I do have a favour to ask. There have been loads of good debates coming in, so thank you so much for that. I've actually got one lined up as a question for next week. This week's favour is... What should we get Andy to do after he's finished this all out time trial shenanigans? I feel like we 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 need to have something that he's training for. So between now and his marathon at the end of the year, what should we make him do? Oh. All questions greatly well, received. Make me do Thank you. Make him do. Yeah. Forced, I think it's you will love hands. it. If we sign you up for a race, yeah. you'll go really annoyed and then you'll get really into it. That is generally the theme of the last, <laughs> the last year or so. I'm like, no, I'm not doing a marathon. Okay, yeah, I'm doing a marathon. Oh, I'm super into this. Yeah, okay, Love fine. the marathon. Okay, hit me. What do you, hit, what, what do you, what do you want me to say? See, look, I've already convinced Something him. involving cross-training here, I feel. Ooh, not running. Which potentially we might be covering next week. Ooh, yeah. exciting. See, See you then. then. <laughs> oh, that was nice. <laughs>